What is fear? A human instinct? An indicator of some danger? Well, there are hundreds of theories, all of which are correct in their own way. Numerous studies have been done through the years, and all of them have the same unanswered question. What's the limit of fear a human can produce? And what happens when we successfully break it? Although the question itself may not seem important, it could alter human history if done right. Recently, me and a group of highly known and respected scientists were brought together to find the answer. We all had to sign NDAs, which had said if we were to violate the NDA and reveal this to the public, well, we would be executed. We'd be given a limitless supply of cash for whatever needs we have, no matter the result of this experiment. The reason we're attempting this is because it's believed that once the limit of fear a human can handle is found, broken and removed, any task can be done with ease. Each and every phobia and fear would be erased. Humanity wouldn't fear death if it was looking right at it. This first started because the military had issues with over 48% of enlisted soldiers having difficulties pulling the trigger, even if it meant life or death. Then, however, the CIA came along. They completely altered the course of where the experiment would go, although I'm not sure if it was for better or for worse. We started testing on human subjects, exposing their phobias and fears and letting them come face to face with them, even letting them get killed just for the extra few results. We documented each experiment. After months of endless testing, we finally got some decent results. This is the next phase of the experiment, letting others test it out themselves and seeing their unfiltered reactions. First question. You wake up in a cold sweat, dazed and confused. You look around the room and see a figure in the corner. It knows you're looking at it, but chooses not to strike. It's toying with your emotions. You know your chances of survival are low. Would you attempt to fight or run? Second question. You are tasked with retrieving venom from a deadly spider. It's your job, and some say it's the most dangerous one. You don't know much about the spider itself, so you carelessly try to catch it, but it jumps on you and bites you. You jump back, get the antivenom, and clean the wound. After 39 days, you notice little tiny eggs in your skin around where the spider had bitten you. They start hatching and tearing skin. Would you call for help? or cut off your arm. Third question. The year is 2020, the 3rd of April. The COVID-19 virus is spreading. You notice you're out of milk and reluctantly go outside with no mask or any kind of protection. In front of your closest store is a large group of people. You can't go to a different store. That would be too much work. You squeeze through, but it only gets harder. The large group is growing as they all want to go to the store and buy everything they can. Would you push through and have to go out again in the same way? Or go back and risk it taking even longer? Fourth question. You fall into a cave. Not too deep, but nonetheless your leg is broken. You know you won't be able to climb out, so you get out your phone and call 911. They know your location and are on their way. While examining the room, you notice something moving in the darkness. Then a slight hiss. Soon enough, you know it's a snake. Not just one, though. With the flashlight on your phone, you see what looks to be over 40 of them coming right for you. You recognize the type of snake. It fears light but can sense movement, and its hearing is much better than that of any human. If you stay still, they won't attack. Three hours pass and eight of them are on you. You can hear the ambulance in the distance. If you say a word, it could mean death. Do you scream out and hope they can find you in time? Or do you carefully use the phone's flashlight and attempt to slowly get them all far enough to where you can escape? Fifth question. You go camping with some friends. During the night, they all slowly vanish into the forest. <laughs> it's a practical joke, you think. Three hours pass and no sign of them. Maybe they just ditched you. 
You grab a flashlight and walk around, but still staying close to the tents so you don't get lost. You hear twig snapping, what sounds like chewing and breathing nearby. You don't know what it is, or if it knows you're there. Do you start sprinting in a random direction, or start screaming to try and scare it away? Sixth question. You're on board a cruise. No family, no friends. You did it because you needed some time off. You got a little too drunk and fell off the boat. Nobody even heard it. You still hope to survive, although you have no idea where you are. Thirty minutes pass, but it feels like it's been five hours. Using your waterproof phone's flashlight, you look around you every five minutes or so, because you're paranoid. Every now and then, you do see something that resembles a shark, or so you think. It becomes more frequent, and you have nothing to defend yourself with. Do you start frantically panicking and splashing the water to try and scare it away? Or do you start swimming in any direction? Seventh question. Every night before bed, you see a man standing outside your house. You know it's been happening for over a year now. Slowly he gets closer, and one night his face is pressed up against your window at night. The cops can't catch him, and you feel defenseless when you know he's there, and you don't know his intentions. One night you hear a knock on the door, then it gets more frequent, then louder, then stronger. You become paranoid and scared. You know it's him. Do you run, or do you fight? Eighth question. After reading this or any scary story, do you feel safe at home? And if so, what would you do if you suddenly started experiencing paranormal activities? Ninth question. Do you lock your doors at night? If so, how hard would it be to unlock them without the key? Tenth question. How safe do you feel after watching a horror movie? Eleventh question. You hear screaming. You know it's me. You know I'm after you. And you know I can get inside. You know, no matter where you go, I'll find you. You know as you're reading this, I'm at the window. Eighteenth question. Do you fear death? Fourth question. How certain are you that the cops will find you? First question. How would you like to be killed? First question. Would you be okay with me consuming your flesh afterwards? First question. Don't look up. Second question. I'll find your family next. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this story today. Really means a lot to me and to the author of the story, of course. Well, if you want to know more about me, I'm pretty much everywhere on social media. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can download my music on SoundCloud. Um, I've got a Patreon if you feel like. Throw me a dollar or two. Very much appreciated. And of course, on Reddit, I have a place where you can leave stories if you want me to read one that you've written. Well, hoping to see you all again very soon. Till then, sweet dreams. Bye-bye.